survey works with the partnership of NASA and US Agency for International Development with the mission to connect space to village. With my role as agriculture and food security, uh, I get to work with service operational regions. We also call them as a hub and they are situated in three continents, Asia, Africa and Americas, where we work with the local organizations who are connected with the grassroots level stakeholders who truly understand the challenges of environment on the ground. And these organizations have co-development approach which starts with understanding what are the challenges, what are their resources and what are their technical capacity. So Sarveer Hindu Kushi Malayas has a chief organization as ECMOD which is International Center for Integrated Mountain Development and this organization established partnership in 2010. Sarveer HKH has been a key partner to Sarveer Global. We do have a technical and scientific team from Hub who works on understanding the agricultural challenges in Nepal. Data collection work is difficult because if not quality data, it does not work for the EBJ space policy who have data gap. So, sorry, this type of crop mapping, it is very useful to estimate quality data. Sorry, help us in this work. Area mapping helps us to know which crop is very much grown which should be grown more and on which crop should we invest also. So that also helps in crop procurement prices. So based on that we provide subsidies to the crops and we estimate the production. Torai region is basically the uh, food basket of Nepal. The rice production in Torai is contributing to uh, 70 to 80 percent of the rice production of the whole Nepal. During this co-development, we talked with the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development. We have were in talk with the national, international agencies like uh, World Food Program, uh, International Rice Research and, uh, Institute, and CIMIT. While co-developing, we develop a methodology using all this remote sensing technology for rice area mapping in Chiton district as a pilot. And once we have that result, we share with all the stakeholders with the direct supervision of Minister. He suggested us to cover the Tarai Belt of Nepal, then we moved towards upscale our work to the Tarai Belt of Nepal. Previously, uh, in some of the district, like Dhanusha district, uh, there was around 30% gap between our data and remote sensing data. Now we are uh, somehow agreeing to the fact that yeah, there is some changes in the area and we should change it accordingly, uh, accordingly to the remote sensing data as also. Around 30 to 40 percent area is still being cultivated in the mountainous and hilly region. That kind of information is very important so as to we can analyze that uh, whether we have to improve the soil fertility or erosion control in the mountainous, mountainous region to increase the production. Uh, that kind of information is very essential so, as, so that we can plan accordingly. Mapping smallholder farming in mountainous regions using earth observation data can be pretty challenging for several reasons. Images across a historical timeline are pretty limited. The number that can produce data at a fine enough spatial resolution to capture farms that are less than a half hectare in size are even fewer. Cloud cover is pretty frequent in the Himalayas, especially during the monsoon season, which can limit the number of available scenes and useful pixels that we can feed into our model. Complex, rugged terrain also means that satellite data can suffer from topographical effects like shadowing or distortion, which need to be corrected before the data is useful. Additionally, at Servere, we use open source, free satellite data that's accessible for all of our partners. For the higher region of Nepal, uh, instead of doing from the scratch, what we are trying to do is we are trying to replicate the, the Farm Action Toolkit, which the NASA team has developed uh, in Bhutan. And in Bhutan, they have a similar topography that we have in the higher region of Nepal. So Farm Action Toolkit is a service which was created uh, 
uh, when we had our interagency agreement with Department of State and NASA in Bhutan, it has almost 70% of agriculture area which is in mountainous regions and in steep slopes. So to monitor that region there are several challenges. Farm Action Toolkit provides solutions to monitor these complicated geographical areas. It uses satellite data such as Landsat's long historical data and it produces agricultural monitoring which gives information on cultivated areas such as crop, non-crop information for last two decades. Not only that but it also provides crop type related area such as rice. Farm Action Toolkit also provides yield estimation related information. This particular service connects the understanding of the partners on the ground to solve challenges which are related to the food security. Our partners in the Bhutan can understand how their impact of policies was in the past and how their policies will impact in the future. This particular approach also helped National Land Commission to identify 30% more farmers for their tax benefit related application. This was one of the application which we as a scientist could never imagine without our partners. So with ECMOD, uh, we are working to implement Farm Action Toolkit using co-development approach again to replicate this system. So we have to start with building their technical capacity and then how they can transfer and adopt this service sustainably. So we are very positive with the outcomes from the NASA team in Bhutan. So that farm action toolkit will help us to map rice in the higher region of Nepal. Earth observation is having a greatest innovation of its era. We see the future where satellite data is turned into action-oriented insights to help our decision makers to solve their climate issues. To learn about Servir's work, go to servirglobal.net.